Hello and welcome back to Deus Machina Demon Bane. Demon Bane, will you perform one last task for me? Deep, deep in outer space, Al speaks to her comrade as her mind traces the path of their battle. I think you have enough left for one of us. Demon Bane does not respond, but even so Al continues. This is the wrong sort of eternity after all. If we are to find it happiness, it must be one of a different kind. Demon Bane does not respond. Kuru has given me many irreplaceable things, a wealth of blessings greater than I could have ever hoped for. So now, Demon Bane, let us return this man to his world. Demon Bane. His smile shines brightest under the sun. Demon Bane answers the girl's prayer. And slowly, Demon Bane thrusts its hand into its chest and pulls out its engine. Beating in Demon Bane's hand is its own heart, the Corleonis. Silver Key, Guardian God Engine. From its undying heart, which draws infinite energy from the innumerable parallel universes, Demon Bane prepares to call forth its final power. Meanwhile, Al spreads her consciousness through the entire universe. She focuses her mind so not to let the slightest clue escape, and the strain on her soul fills her with unimaginable pain. Yet even that pain gives her joy. She sheds her blood for the sake of her beloved. A mere grimoire could never feel this pain. For it is the privilege granted only to life that knows love. The song of life is coursing through her veins. Wherever it takes, I will find his world, Demon Bane. You must open the gate. And then Al sees the light. The glow of the city. The shine of the people living their lives. And although only a glimpse, it is enough. Demon Bane! The Corleonis bursts apart and from it pours the universe. The ghostly gate appears, wavering like a mirage. It looks like it could fade at any moment, but it is a clear path back to that world. Though breathing hard and covered in sweat, Al smiles upon the sleeping face of her beloved. For one last time, she speaks her thanks. Thank you for everything. You are my master, kind to a fault, and... And... She casts the transfer spell. And Karu's body disintegrates into particles of light and is drawn into the gate. You are my eternal beloved, my one and only. Kuru, I love you. And one last time she speaks her love. I hear Al's voice through the fog of sleep, and feeling a terrible sense of loss as though the floor is falling away beneath me, I snap awake. But I'm too late. Al, what are you doing? I burst into light before I can speak, and all I can do is stare at Al, tears glistening in her jade green eyes as she smiles. No doubt it lasts for less than a second, but it feels like a smile burns me for an eternity, and even that is lost to me. She's fading. Al's smile grows smaller and smaller, vanishing into the sea of stars with Demon Bane. Dumbass! I didn't ask for this, damn it! We said we'd be together! Forever! Why do you always- Shit! No matter how I shout, I cannot be heard. No matter how I strain, I cannot reach. Everything slips from my fingers like sand and all that's left is a horrible loneliness. The lights of the city grow in my heart, their warmth terribly cruel. Ow! Even after Kuro has vanished and Demon Bane has fallen completely silent, Al still continues to smile. And in a quiet voice she speaks to her comrade in arms. Now then, Demon Bane, shall we drift together? But, you know... She whispers to herself, and then her tears are finally loosed. They fall and fall with nothing to stop them. This place is a little cold to be alone. Yet Al keeps smiling, and even as she cries, her smile never fades. I hope there is some place warm at the end of this journey. And how wonderful it will be if Kuru is waiting there. Thinking of Kuru, she keeps smiling. Her smile never, ever fades. Dumbass. Gazing up at the night sky, I fall slowly. The stars seen from Earth aren't nearly as bright as those seen from space, but their light is filled with kindness and warmth. I guess the stars are just as beautiful here as they are up there. Dumbass! Gazing up at the night sky, I fall slowly. I see something else glittering. Something not a star. It twinkles prettily for a moment before vanishing into the dark. Oh. I see. Of course. I finally realise then that I'm crying. Dumbass. 
Gazing up at the night sky, I fall slowly. I'm returning to the warm embrace of that bustling city. Cast out of eternity, I am going home. I'll... I'll never forgive you. The twinkling stars. The city lights. They are love. Kind, yet unforgiving. Sung into the eternity by momentary lives. They are the song of life. Al... No matter how brightly their cities are lit, nor how much science exposes the darkness of superstition, people cannot abandon God. This is because... Oh, you know the rest. I could talk about the light of science and clinging to God and all that, but, well, the point is I haven't eaten in a week. All that's passed these lips in the past week have been salt and water. As per usual, now I'm dealing with white pigeons and Flanders dog here in this glorious and hopeless afternoon, as the world explodes in a storm of emotion. Like I said, you know how it goes. Anyway, I just want you to understand that I'm about to starve to death here, but what else is new? Ah, oh, Kuru's fallen down! Yay! It's a dead guy! The kids are having their way with me. Yet another part of my daily routine. I'm getting used to having shit written on my face and bugs put on my head. Realising that I need to punish these brats in the name of heaven, I use the last of my power to return to life. Oh, I'm going to teach you all about the greatness of love and peace. But wait, they're trying to conquer the world. Take aim. Fire, fire, fire. Ah, I've got no idea what's going on. The zombie's going nuts. Kuru, ah. Oh my, the poor lost sheep Kuru is bearing his poisonous fangs at the children. Stop, look, I'm not taking the same insults twice. Now then, will she start cooking or will she start singing the ending theme? The answer after the commercial break. The same insults... Oh my! Wait, Kuru, come back! Come back! I'm back. I've returned to Arkham City. To everyone's side. I've returned to the city that I love. To the life that I love. I'm home. Huh? You're going to re-enroll at Mesotonic? Yeah. Old Man Armitage is pulling a lot of strings for me. This time I'll take it seriously. As always, I'm sitting at Lisa's table, helping myself to her food and drink. Lisa looks at me with wide eyes, half surprised and half doubtful. What's gotten into you? Can't I be serious for a change? That's not it, but it's so sudden. Hell, even I think about things once in a while. I smile wryly. I mean, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. I've decided I can't just keep doing everything half-assed. So this time, I'm going to do it right. Lisa's eyes grow even wider than before, and she starts quivering with uncontrollable emotion. Oh, Lord. How wonderful. Kuru. Kuru of all people. Kuru. <coughs> Sorry. Oh. I'll try that line from the top. Oh lord, how wonderful! Kuru, Kuru of all people! Kuru is finally, finally! He's finally talking like a proper man! Why do you always give me such a hard time? Sulking, I finish off my tea. Lisa laughs it off and refills my cup. But I really am happy! Kuru, you're such an amazing person! You need to study hard, strive towards your goals! I'm always on your side, okay? Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks, Lisa. I thank her rather nonchalantly while sipping my tea, but Lisa starts blinking furiously in surprise. And is it just me, or is she blushing? C come on, Kuru! You're embarrassing me! But really, what's gotten into you? It's nothing. I've, I've just got to be thankful for all the good things in my life. <laughs> Thanks for the food. I drain my second cup and stand to leave. I'm sure you have to spend a lot on tuition and such, but make sure you save enough to live like a human, okay? I'll do my best. I'm sorry, given that he saved the goddamn planet, are you telling me Ruri isn't going to give him a decent chunk of cash so he can live on that? Let's face it, she's rich as all hell! You know, she could give him a... You know, she could give, probably give him, you know, like 10 million quid and not even notice it. And let's face it, you can live very comfortably on 10 million quid for a lifetime. Kuru... Lisa calls out to me just as I grab the doorknob. Her voice is kind and gentle, but with a hint of gravity. Kuru, you seem so much stronger, like, like a different person. What happened, really? Her words are like a knife at my heart. But I don't let my pain show as I turn around. I don't need to. Just a smile, a little. Okay, there's no trace of bitterness or self-derision in my expression. Nothing special, I just... I decided to man up, stop running. Night, Lisa. I leave without saying another word. 
the battle against Black Lodge and Master Therian has ended. However, no one remembers that it ever happened. Nope. Black Lodge never existed in Arkham City in the first place. And as we fought beyond Yogg-Sagoth, outside the boundaries of time and space, I came to know the truth. History has repeated itself countless times. Al and I, Master Therian and Etheldria, Demon Bane and Liber Legis, we were all trapped in an end-ending time loop. Everything was to destroy that sacred artifact that shining to appease a hadron, return creation to chaos. But we defeated Miss Naya, Nialathoth. Nialathoth. Nialathothep, okay. Nialathothep, and stopped the god's plan. We conquered fate and were freed from the curse of the Eternal Spiral. Master Therian's name was erased from history and the organization he created, the Black Lodge, never existed. Black Lodge will never make anyone weep. No one will suffer the tortures of fate. A terrible battle will never happen again. And it never even happened in the first place. And neither the, did the time I spent with Al. <sighs> well, there's still... Ah! It's a destroyer robot! Damn you! This officer will protect the peace of Arkham City! Wait, Stone, don't be so hasty! Ah! Damn. I find myself sighing heavily. How pitiful the police are! Built by the great, genius Dr. West! This Super West Invisible Robot GR1, everything for Big Afro, is the strongest robot ever created! With my greatest masterpiece, I will take revenge on the academic world! Not that I have anything particularly against it. You're, you're doing it for fun? Vengeance is mine, Robo. History has changed a little, but the city is still as crazy as ever. And as always, Harkham is in a golden age. An age of chaos and a dark age all at the same time. I leap out in front of the destroyer robot as it smashes buildings with reckless abandon. Ah, Doctor, someone's there, Robo. Hmm. Who are you, youngster? If you stand in the way of my conquest, I'll turn you into a hairy strawberry ice cream. The city fills with the squealing of Dr. West's guitar and his mad screaming. Ah, this guy never changes. I sigh heavily once again. What's wrong? Are you pissing yourself in terror at the sight of my destroyer robot? Nyaa! <laughs> huh? My mind accelerates. And with fluid motions that even I'm proud of, I draw my two guns from their holsters and take aim. In my right hand is an automatic. It's red and black burning cruelty. And in my left a revolver. It's silver glittering beautifully. Seeing my guns thrust at him, Dr. West breaks into peals of laughter. <laughs> you think those pea shooters will have an effect on my Super West Invisible Ray Gang, etc., etc.? Ah! I empty both guns in the blink of an eye, and Cthulhu's flaming shells blast the robot's right leg to splinters. And Ithaqua's frozen bullets dive through the cracks in the robot's armor to shred the vital systems in its left leg. Ah! Robo! Doctor! Unable to support itself, the destroyer robot falls on its back. The city shakes wildly as the robot struggles to right itself, and the plume of smoke fr uh, rising from it higher than the skyscrapers. Ha! What? How could my greatest masterpiece be defeated so easily? J just who are you? Holstering my guns with a spinning flourish, I give the destroyer robot a bold grin. The name's Diaju Kuru. Remember it. Without another word, I turn my back of the robot and walk off. Mysterious silence is left in my wake. This... This is a budding rivalry! A budding romance? You guys seem awfully pleased. Okay, that's a good point to end this part. I feel like we're getting pretty close to the end of this game now, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next and very possibly final part.